Welcome to class two of Thermodynamics one. Today we're going to deal with uh, pressure. We're just going to do a little introductory of energy uh, and then we're going to also introduce a little bit about temperature, but we're mostly going to focus on pressure and that's what this first video will be about. So uh, this is section 1.7 from the textbook. Uh, in the back of the book, we have our unit conversions and here are various types of pressures, but mostly all we really ever concerned about or the main ones that we're going to use are going to be uh, kilopascals, which are not shown right here. So let's just write that KPA, kilopascals, um, because that usually gets us right around the, the right uh, uh, region. Uh, there it is right there, kilopascals. Okay, right there. So one atmosphere, regular pressure, is 101.3. I'll probably accidentally say 101.4. You can just think right around 100. Is, uh, 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 kilopascals is what standard atmospheric pressure is going to be. Of course, it varies, depends on the weather and uh, your altitude. Um, and the other is uh, PSI, right? And so we usually go PSI with this pounds per square inch and the standard atmosphere is usually considered to be 14 point, well, I just wrote 17, Jesus. And I just used the Lord's name in vain. 14.7 PSI. And uh, we're gonna make this distinction in a second, but uh, there's, th there's a difference usually in P uh, uh, for between gauge pressure and absolute pressure. You should get very used to that. For many calculations, we use absolute pressure. But most of the time when we're talking about, you know, a pressure, when you say the pressure is, and then you give a value, it's usually going to be the gauge pressure because we read it off of a gauge. And, the, and we consider the atmospheric pressure and gauge pressure is zero. And if we ever need to have absolute, we add the uh, atmosp standard atmospheric to it generally. Or it could be actually what the atmospheric pressure happens to be at that time. I think that's fair to say because the gauge is usually calibrated uh, so that it's at zero when uh, we, have, we have a zero when there's no pressure inside the vessel. So what we're saying is it's at atmospheric pressure when it's zero. So that you'll see sometimes you'll see PSI G for gauge and PSI A for absolute. And the difference between these is generally going to be right around 14.7. We, that's our, what, what's our standard uh, considered uh, uh, atmospheric pressure. And then, of course, right here, we uh, usually have uh, 101 point... I almost did it again. I, I don't know where I get 101.4. I, I have to double check and see. I think that's one of those things that where engineers just tend to use 101.4. And this book decided to be uh, precise and break away from what's standard. The main idea in pressure, is, I mean, the, the really... Uh, the fundamental thing to consider is that pressure acts in all directions. Uh, that's kind of hard to think of sometimes when you uh, when we get into fluids, because notably that uh, pressures change from position to position, and when that there is a change in position, change in pressure from position, that's what creates flow. Is that you go from a high pressure to a low pressure, and therefore fluid moves in that direction. But um, if we're just talking about a static pressure. Pressure acts in every direction, and it creates a force against the area uh, about which uh, it touches. Um, also, in the units, important to note that a pascal is equal to a newton per meter squared. So anytime you see a newton per meter squared, it just, poof, turns into a pascal. So if you're going to be precise with the K, KPA, the kilopascals, that's 1,000 pascals. Um, and a standard atmosphere, as we said, was 101.3 uh, kilopascals or 101,325 pascals. And that equals to 14.7 pounds per, per uh, square inch PSI. So there's your conversion rate if you wanted to uh, find it. There's also this thing, this very standard called a bar. And a bar is just simply equal to, uh, they're shown as 0.1, but that's also equal to 100 kilopascals. So almost in atmospheres. There's a very small difference, but quite often 
in SI equipment or metric equipment, a bar will be the kind of gauge that you use that's very similar. Um, here is a pictorial thing that uh, describing, here's absolute zero. So here's absolute, so this is the absolute zero is the, um, that's the, the largest vacuum that we can occur. So right here is what atmosphere would be. So sometimes we will have a gauge and it'll go the other direction. Like this will be a positive and then this will be a vacuum right here. So this, this gauge is at gauge pressure and in the direction of the negative pressure, which is vacuum, which would be anything down there. Let's go vacuum in that direction right there. We sometimes measure from that as the reference. And in US units, for whatever reason, we use inches of mercury is the standard. Um, I don't know. I think they just go, they just put a vacuum on the back of usually the bar. That's the most common in a metric type of situation. But you have to be to recognize that anything in this direction is gauge. Anything from up here is absolute. And anything measured downwards from here is usually considered a vacuum. And for US, that would be inches of mercury. And we'll talk about that soon, or even right yeah, in, in, in a little bit. All right, so um, one thing that you can recognize with pressure is that we could use it for mechanical advantage. We could take a particular force right here against a particular area, and that's going to create a pressure. That same pressure is going to act everywhere along here and act up on here. So we can have a larger area, so we can have the force is going to be that same pressure. I don't know why they're going at P2. P1 equals P2. There you go. That's why. And be able to look up a, a, a large force. So we have sort of this force increaser, which we call mechanical advantage. Just like a, a maybe a pry bar is a mechanical advantage or gears are mechanical advantage. We were able to use a small force over here to create a large force. And we can take a ratio between these forces in these areas. And you can see that we now, were, that those force, the ratio of those forces is equal to uh, the ratio of those areas. Um, a common use, and you could, and like if you were taking notes, you might want to go write out mechanical advantage, mechanical advantage. And when you think mechanical advantage, picture this picture and then that equation right there. So we have these words, a picture, and an equation. And those things can help to like uh, uh, trigger the memory of, uh, uh, of these concepts, right? That we can increase the pressure with uh, uh, the, the area and therefore be able to have a force ratio and uh, take advantage of that. Um, another useful port part of, of pressure well, another useful part of, well, let me see. Another thing that we want to do is be able to measure pressure by using a manometer. Manometer. And I don't know what the, I think, man, oh, is usually, I think that's a, usually means hand. So I don't know how that applies to this. Or maybe it does, maybe that O changes what that Latin uh, uh, prefix means. But anyway, the, the main idea here is that if we want to find the pressure in here, we can look and see where this pressure is acting onto this surface right here, and atmospheric pressure is acting on it here. So when we have a, a change in height right there, uh, that, that's going to indicate that this is a larger pressure than this, right? Because this is pushing this one down more than that, kind of in a similar way to what that's happening right there. And we can find that. So like if we needed to find this pressure, we could have the general equation that the pressure at P right here is going to be equal to this pressure plus the specific weight of what's inside here times the H, the, 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 the difference right here, the difference between this surface and this surface. Now, we can have a much more complicated one. So I usually, what I describe to do is to go, this is the starting point. We're going to swim downwards and swimming down, that's my swim down, is positive, all right? So we swim down is positive, and then, but anywhere where we have like something that's even, we can just jump over to here, right? So we just jump from here to there. 
if we're, if we're talking about a U-shaped thing. The pressure here is identical to the pressure right there. So we, and this is a gas, so, it, so its height doesn't matter, right? So if we wanna find the pressure P, we start here with the PO, whatever this atmospheric is, and we go downwards, get to here, jump over here, and that's equal to that, right? So that is equal to start point and swim down. And when we have a more complicated manometer, this actually might be minus if we happen to swim upwards. So we might have several different layers of fluids, and, the, and, and so the fluids don't mix with each other. They're going to uh, have separate different heights. But we, as we travel through the place where we're starting to, put to our destination, it's positive when we go down, negative if we go up. Um, another thing to know about uh, using these, these uh, heights, or sometimes we call them columns, and by the way, it doesn't matter how wide these are. That doesn't change anything. Where it does he in here, because they're encapsulated, right here, they're allowed to flow, so the, 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 uh, there's no piston involved in this. So whether this thing is really, well, up to a point, fairly small or fairly large, this water column will cause the same pressure. Uh, one, one exception is if it's really, really, really thin, then we have something called capillary action. But that's not something we have to worry about in this course. Um, this right here is an ancient type of barometer. So this, uh, let's just say this is mercury. And the vapor pressure of mercury, when it's at absolute vacuum or as close as you can, approaches really close to zero. So there's approximately equal to zero. And so really what we end up having here is sort of a, a type of manometer where we, uh, let's say we swim down to here, boom, swim down. So we start with essentially zero and then go density or spe excuse me, specific weight of mercury, if, that, if this is a mercury uh, barometer, and then down to here, and then here's atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is going to be equal to zero plus the specific weight times this right here. And that's our way, and so we can see what this column, this height right here, that's our way of measuring what the uh, uh, atmospheric pressure is. So, um, and so this, this was a, a measure, a way of doing it in uh, olden times, but nobody really wants to have this big old pool of mercury hanging around because it's poisonous. Um, all right, so that's enough of an introduction. I think my next video or videos are going to be some examples with these, and I might have several of them. But that was our introduction to pressure, and so we want to be able to find pressure in a number of different ways, know what that relative pressure is, right? That's one of the very important things is this guy right here about gauge pressure versus absolute pressure versus vacuum. Um, a little bit about mechanical advantage. We won't cover that too much. It's important. But also manometers, very important in there. And, and then also changing the units, being able to change familiarization and being able to change units. So that's it for this lecture.